Hi everyone, welcome to Season 4, Week 3 of the Los Altos Juice Frogs Team Builder Dynasty. And this week we will be playing Holy Green Falcons in Ohio. So this is one of our recruiting games that we promised our recruits will play a game in Ohio. And hopefully we can come out on top. So far, so good. On 30 inches, Bowling Green fails to convert. And we take back over, we give the ball to Alan Cosby, he's got a nice first down on the short route. Now Fletcher drops back to pass again, he's got it to J.R. Slaughter. J.R. Slaughter has just come up there time and again. And for somebody with only 56 catch rating, he's done a very nice job. Now we get to B.J. Kelly wide open on the smash route, we're inside the 10. This time Fletcher looks, he's got Cross. Cross is one of our new uh, freshman wide receivers. He has 95 speed but only 79 acceleration I think. So he's definitely not going to be a huge com contributor on the year. But he's a nice placeholder on the left side. Where he can you know, at least try to burn the safeties a little bit if they try to cheat too much on a two man under. But here a horrible fumble by Bowling Green when they try to pitch the ball backwards. And they were extremely lucky to not have that uh, as a fun ball. So we were unfortunate not to pick that up. It was now third and nine, Rodriguez drops back to pass. I think he's got a man open, but he underthrow him. So it's fourth and nine, we take back over after a punt, but it's already third and 11. Fletcher drops back to pass, he's going deep. And wow, Henry comes open at the last minute. Nice job showing his speed there, coming open on a route that was essentially covered and getting another touchdown all the way to the house. So now 14-0 already, Bowling Green decides to go with the screen pass, they get to Irwin, nice job getting around the blocks, and picking up additional 30 yards after getting the first down, so great play there by Bowling Green. This time Rodriguez is hammered, bring up a third and 20. And Rodriguez is almost picked off again on third and 20. And Bowling Green has been very lucky to avoid two near interceptions. Now we take over after a punt and we give the ball to JR Slaughter again. JR Slaughter is just becoming a key player in our offense. And Bull Fletcher is having a great day again. And surprisingly, he has been very accurate for a guy who doesn't necessarily have very good accuracy when we first recruited him. But he has been able to improve that accuracy in the training sessions uh, from the from one season to another. And here he's got BJ Kelly open, great throw there. Bowling Green takes over, but it's already third and down for already third down for them after a couple plays, and they just throw that one way out of bounds. So another uh, three and out for Bowling Green. So we take over. It's 21 to zero, and BJ Kelly's got another completion. Now it's inside the 15, first and 10. I sense a blitz, and I throw it over the top, dangerous throw there, but given that it's Bowling Green and we're up 21 to 0, I figure I'd try it. That was, that's one of the best ways to beat the blitz, if you have the confidence to make that throw. And now 28 to 0, we hit Bowling Green on 3rd and inches, so it brings up 4th and inches. So they have to punt the ball, and now we get the ball with 28 to 0. So if, last year, uh, if the game last week was a clinic, then this game... It's just a total domination. Yeah, we throw an interception there, but it's only 31 seconds left in the half. So not really an unforced error in the sense I figured we might as well go for it. But here, wide open BJ Kelly. And this just should not happen. BJ Kelly getting a 10-yard completion and taking it all the way to the house un un untouched. So now it's 35-0. to zero. Now Rodriguez drops back the pass. Oh my gosh, lucky to get the ball off before he was sacked. But given that it's fourth down, they have to punt again. At this point, all the uh, backups are in. Uh, Drew Allen, not a good decision there. I was trying to hit JR Slaughter again, but floated the ball a little bit too much. And Bowling Green scores their first touchdown. Kind of funny that their first touchdown is actually a pick six, considering that their offense just cannot get anything going. And now we get to Brown, another backup. Brown is actually our cornerback. But we have all of our second team players in there, so it doesn't really matter. This time we get to Robertson. That's also kind of funny. Robertson's our speed guy with 97 speed, and he's playing the possession receiver spot. So all our formations are out of whack, but it's still fun to run up the score on these guys. Like this busted coverage, wide open touchdown to Chapside. 
42 to 7. And it's only in the third quarter. We're still half the quarter to go. It's just unbelievable. And it's a fumble. Rodriguez fumbles the ball. We pick it up. Cannot advance the ball that much, but we're still in good field position. Allen drops back to pass. Bad decision on my part. I had a man wide open coming across the middle. Should have never thrown this. I guess I got a little bit overconfident given that we're just completely crushing Bowling Green. So another interception. Unfortunately, it gives uh, Bowling Green another chance to screw up. Uh, nice run by Rodriguez here. He doesn't stumble. So at least uh, Bowling Green is able to keep possession for once. But just when I say that, Bowling Green sacked again in second and 21. Not looking good for them at all. They go deep. This one's intercepted by Calvin Smith. He's a sophomore now. I'm still very high on this guy. I and mean, he should be starting, but given that Davenport's so good, he's backing up Davenport. But still getting a lot of playing time since we played 7 DBs a lot. This time we got Warren Ball on the slam. Nice job diving for the catch to get the, uh, to get the completion. And this time we got Slaughter, same play. I mean, for a guy with only 56 catch, that's a nice dive. I mean, he does have 85 catching traffic, so maybe... Not 85 tra catching traffic. 85 spectacular catch, so maybe he was using his spectacular catch stat there. And now we got it to Robertson on the smash route. And a couple of plays later, it's first and goal, and we just walk into the end zone dive anyway. It's 49-7. to And this one is in the books. Well, it's been in the books for like... 5 minutes already, but... I guess we'll play it out to try to run up the score, especially given that these are early season games. You want to run up the score so you make sure that your recruiting ratings are all A-plus for the ratings that you care about, like QB pass, wide receiver pass, and offensive line pass. And here it's another interception. I mean, after a while, I just stopped keeping track. It's, it's just a ridiculous game right now. I did not expect to have such an easy game, given that last year we actually got defeated by Ohio. Here another bad decision. Well, at this point, it's not even bad decisions. I was just throwing them up and seeing what happens. And Rodriguez is slammed down again. Brings up a third and 20. Yeah, he's wondering what's going on. I mean, I expected to beat Bowling Green, but I did not expect this kind of result. I mean, 4th and 15 at that point, it's not even worth it for them to go for it. Can we put up more points? Hmm, not really. So Allen is sacked. So we decided to just punt the ball and Bowling Green was ineffective again on their final possession. So there you go, 49-7. to uh, Pretty much took Bowling Green to school. Yeah, this game was, again, never close. Yeah, just a great result. Again, our team was not tested, so it's very hard to say how well we we're going to do in the Pac-12. We basically played the inferior opponent and cleaned them out. Funny that we got one Los Altos Juice Frog fan sitting among all the Bowling Green fans. I mean, if I was that fan, I wouldn't go all the way from California to Bowling Green to watch this kind of game. But, you know, maybe he has a lot of free time on his hands or something. But anyway, a uh, great win. So next week we're going to be taking out FIU, another recruiting game, since we promised the game in Florida. And FIU is definitely one of the weakest teams in Florida. So hopefully we'll be able to pull out another win and continue our streak of our unbeaten non-conference schedule. So hope you guys enjoyed and see you in Miami.